Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. Cut the music. I'm not doing this for my normal spot. So good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So we're already open for business here, uh, and the football gods are awake here watching the Dallas Texans take on the Philadelphia Eagles today with the Super Bowl. Today, it's both teams' day, and I'm literally sick to my stomach, okay? I'm just disgusted. You know, Jerry Jones could learn a lot from both of these teams, from both of these teams, because you can look at complete 180s of what the Dallas Cowboys did. You'll remember that last year we ended up hearing Jerry Jones basically lamb I'm sorry, Stephen Jones lamb based the Rams and say, you know, we don't believe that that's the right way to build a team. And, you know, it is short-sighted to say we're going to trade away our future to get success right now. But I believe if you ask the Cowboy fan, if we traded all of our picks to try and get a loaded team and won the Super Bowl and then had two or three years of down years of rebuilding, I'd probably say that Cowboy fans would be okay with that. I mean, we have gone through three, five, and 11 years in a row. We went through three, eight, and eight years in a row. I think at least a Super Bowl in this century might, might just kind of make it a little bit better. It might make it a little bit better. It would kill Philadelphia Eagles uh, jokes about we haven't seen a high-def Super Bowl. But as I look at Kansas City, Kansas City, one thing the Cowboys do, and you can look at where we are right now, the discussions for the Cowboys this offseason are, do we re-sign Tony Pollard to you know the franchise tag and get him a long-term deal? Do we bring back Zeke Elliott, you know, our running back? Do we hold on to Tyron Smith? And, of course, how we get some cap relief. Other teams, the teams we're looking at in the Super Bowl right now, they're not looking at those situations and saying we need to keep older players. They get rid of older players. They let them go. They let them go other places. They, they let players go while they still have a value. Remember Zach Ertz? He was a hero in the Super Bowl for him. They went ahead and moved on, got a younger guy to take his place. And when you think of Kansas City, you know, everybody talks about, you know, oh, they lost Tariq Hill. You know, yeah, they did lose Tariq Hill, but they did have some other weapons there. And they at least went out and got a Juju. A Juju. They got a Juju, okay? Juju got 77 receptions. So it's not Tariq Hill that they got, but they got another weapon to go with all the other ones that they had. And I want you to think about Kansas City, who was in the Super Bowl and they lost. They took two starting offensive linemen and moved on from them that were pro bowlers. Pro bowlers. They weren't saying, well, you know, we got to hold on to Tyron Smith because, you know, he's one of the best tackles in football when healthy. Those two guys weren't healthy for him in the Super Bowl. Bye. Boy, bye. See ya. Good luck elsewhere. We're going to move on. We hold on to guys to the point where they have no value to us, and they've dropped off a cliff. Their performance, not only is it that you're not getting anything in return, you're also having down years from them, and you're relying on them, and a big salary. So we look at it and say, well, Zeke Elliott will take a pay cut. Well, the problem is, is, How much of a pay cut is Zeke Elliott going to take? We're going to have a $6 million cap hit at best. A $6 million cap hit if we make him a post-June 1st cut or he takes a pay cut or worse yet, we restructure, which means we're going to owe it later. Those are the discussions that we have. And instead of us, you know, getting rid of Amari Cooper and then bringing in another talent, we get a James Washington. We say a third-round draft pick is going to be able to step up into the limelight as a rookie and do stuff. I look at the Eagles, the Eagles who lost in the first round of the playoffs to Tampa Bay last year. Quarterback throws a couple interceptions. They look at it and they say, you know what? We need to support our quarterback. 
let's go out here and get ourselves an A.J. Brown. Let's make sure our offensive line is stout. Let's take care of our running game and get a couple more running backs in here. They took the situation and said, okay, how can we build on the success that we had last year and make it better and go up? Cowboys were the complete opposite. They said, hey, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dump our two offensive linemen like the Chiefs did, but they didn't do anything to replace them other than we did draft Tyler Smith. But that wasn't to replace the two guys that we just got rid of. So we don't do those things to help ourselves. We get rid of Amari Cooper, much like Kansas City did with Tariq Hill. But they got some draft compensation, big-time compensation, and they went out and they got another guy who's at least comparable in Juju that fit their system. We don't do that. And I believe they, they got some good picks with that trade. So we handicap ourselves. And this is where you start hearing, you know, even, even the Eagles, they had a really good defense last year. They had great players, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, and those guys. And they said, that's not good enough. Let's go out and get a Hassan Reddick to add to that. We want to have more. We want to be able to keep our defensive linemen and stuff fresh. So limit the amount of plays they play so they're going against an offensive line that's playing the whole game. We're going to wear them out. Whereas we, as the Dallas Cowboys, you know, we say, oh, we got enough. You know, we have a good front starting group of guys. We don't need the backups. And herein lies why we don't go. Now, our players recognize this. This is where you hear Micah Parsons saying, you know, I want Deron Payne. Because he recognizes if I get a great defensive lineman like Deron Payne in there, it's going to make it that much better for me going after the quarterback. It's going to make our defense better. And to a man, you hear um, Trayvon Dick say, go get my brother Stefan. You know, we need more firepower, and I want to play with my brother. You hear CeeDee Lamb. You know, Dak is our quarterback. He needs help. And so this is where we can look at this and say, it's the tale of two cities here, or three cities, I should say, where the Eagles and Kansas City didn't sit back on their laurels and deconstruct the team. They tried to build it up higher. And that is the difference of why those teams are in the Super Bowl and we're sitting here hating on them. Now, I'll be here live streaming today, watching the Eagles going against the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm saying it's actually... The Dallas Texans, and I'm putting money on it with BUSR. I'm partnered with them, and uh, I'm put a couple hundred dollars on Kansas City to win. And that is my hope, because if the Eagles win the Super Bowl again, oh my lord, Eagle fans will descend upon me in this channel like locust, and it won't be for a couple of weeks like they normally are. It will be all off season. My only saving grace would be is that they lose in the Super Bowl. That's all I got. That's all I got. Let's see who Rich Eisen has picked to win the Super Bowl. First, predicting the big game. What is your big game prediction? I need a final score. Who's going to win and who is the most valuable player of the big game? Go for it. I think it's going to be a close game. We're going to get close to the total, which is at 51 now. Under, I'm going to say Philadelphia 26-24. Jalen Hurts, your MVP. That's your prediction. Huh? Ooh. All right. So you heard all of the Eagles. Everyone's saying Philly, Philly, Philly. And you went Philly after all of that. I got to say, Sean Payton kind of convinced me. He kind of put me over the top with the analysis. Okay. Screw you, Sean keep Payton. Keep an eye on the kicking game. Just That's what case. he said. Keep an eye on it. What do you have, TJ Jefferson, your big game prediction? Yeah, man, I, I think the, the yard birds, they jump out early. Uh, probably take the lead into the fourth quarter. I think it's going to be a pretty high-scoring game. I think in the end, Patrick Mahomes is going to rally the Chiefs. I have them coming back to win the game 33-27. to 27. And uh, Mr. Mahomes will be your most valuable player, and he will continue on that path to greatness. 
Well, it's now time for me to Ooh. break the tie oh. here oh. Oh. Uh, and like predict it. the big game. As okay. you know, all year long, Chiefs Nation has been uh, very upset with me. Yeah. Because I looked at the Tyreek Hill departure as a sign that their reign atop the AFC West would be over. I still thought they would be a playoff team, but I thought that there were mm -hmm. uh, holes that needed to be filled also on defense. So I chose the Raiders to win the division, and I still have egg on my face for that. And Chiefs Kingdom folks that I've been running into here in Arizona have done nothing but remind me of that and I'm glad that Eric Stone Street hasn't arrived yet as he will do that as well. So I believe it is fascinating, if you will, potentially ironic, like rain on your wedding day, oh, that I am going to predict the Kansas City oh. Chiefs to win the big game. And I am taking there you them go. to win the big game by a final score of 28 to 24. Oh. I do believe it is going to be a high scoring affair inside this stadium where I watched the Fiesta Bowl put up damn near yeah. 100 points. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a friendly stadium for this yeah. type of neutral site game. And I am going to say that uh, in, in the same way that Mariucci uh, in his mold, Kurt Warner's record, if you will, of being the last Super Bowl MVP yeah. to have won the MVP of the playing season, that's going to get smashed Kaput. and Patrick Mahomes <laughs> will indeed be the first Super Bowl MVP to also be the league MVP Ooh, since Kirk he's going to break the curse 99 I'm taking Kansas City Chiefs wow to win the yeah okay all right that's what we got so I'm going to go ahead and finish getting ready for the game um I'm not sure the, the Eagle fans that were going to come, they're not going to be coming, thank God. So I have to hear this fly, Eagles fly, every time they score. Um, I think David Wiley may be coming, but we may be just doing it, uh, doing it live here. Just me and watching the Philly 500 Meltdown Cam. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies. And I'll see you soon. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report. I'll see you guys tonight.